Let us assume a situation. You have gone to the right ceremony party of a small kid. So as soon as you reach there, you find everyone is talking about the similarity of the kid with its parents. Someone is saying, uh, look at her eyes, it's exactly like her mother. Someone is saying, uh, look at her nose, it's exactly like her father. Why do people talk about these things? Yes, because characters are transmitted from parent to offspring. And the process by which characters are transmitted from one generation to the other is known as inheritance or heredity. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Madhushri Chatterjee. Welcome to MC Biology classes. In today's lecture, I will be talking about principles of inheritance and variation. And this is the chapter number 5 of class 12 biology. And remember, this chapter is a very much conceptual chapter. Okay? So let us begin with it. So first we have to understand these two terms. One is inheritance and the second one is variation. Inheritance I have just mentioned that is the process by which transmission of character from parent to offspring occurs is called inheritance. It's also known as heredity. Now the term variation, we have to understand this. See, the characters are transmitted from parent to offspring. It's true. But do we look exactly like our parents? Do we look exactly like our uh, father or our mother? No, we don't look exactly similar. Okay, that means differences between members of a species with respect to the traits occur and that is known as variation. Why do we call this chapter genetics? See genetics is the branch of science that deals with inheritance and variation. Okay that is genetics. Now the question is, is who coined the term genetics? Okay See, whenever I ask this question to my students, very often I get the answer Mendel, but no, it's not Mendel. When Mendel was working at that point of time, he didn't have any idea about genes. If he didn't have any idea about genes, then how could he coin the term genetics, right? So the term genetics was coined by a scientist whose name is Bateson, okay? So Bateson is the person who coined the term genetics. Now we have to remember three important fathers of genetics. Father of genetics we know it's Mendel. Okay, so let me write here. First is the father of genetics. Father of genetics is Gregor Johann Mendel. We all know his name. Okay. Next one is the father of experimental genetics. The father of experimental genetics and he is T. H. Morgan. I have a question for the viewers. Do you know uh, T. H. Morgan walked with uh, which species? If you know the answer, please write in the comment section. And the third one is the father of biochemical genetics. Okay? You have to memorize these three names because these are very important. And the father of biochemical genetics is Arachibald Garrett. Okay? A. Garrett is the father of biochemical genetics. So these three points is, are very important for NEET exam as well as this one is also very important for NEET exam. So the study of heredity can be divided into three stages. Okay, the first stage is pre-Mendelian era, then the next stage is Mendelian era and the third one is obviously the post-Mendelian era. Now pre-Mendelian era means when Mendel did not start his experiments. So before that, some concepts were there. We have to know those concepts, okay? See, in case of pre-Mendelian era, the first concept of at that time was a theory which is known as moist vapor theory, okay? And it was proposed by the scientist Pythagoras, okay? 
so what was his concept his concept was that every body part produces vapor and those vapors aggregate and they give rise to a new individual so that is about the moist vapor theory then came the second theory that is reproductive blood theory okay it's known as reproductive blood theory and it was proposed by the scientist aristotle aristotle now i have a question for the viewers uh, can you tell me why aristotle is famous okay let me just give you a hint aristotle is regarded as father of something okay if you know the answer write in the comment section so second one is reproductive blood theory what happened in this theory this theory is a bit awkward like according to this theory the blood that is present inside a male is pure blood and that is present inside a female is impure blood and these two kinds of blood will coagulate inside female body and ultimately that will give rise to a new individual and the point is that the new individual that will be formed will have characters from males that will have more number of characters in male in comparison to female why males will contribute more character because males have pure blood so that is the concept of reproductive blood theory then the third theory was pre formation theory third theory was pre formation theory and it was given by swammerdam okay it was given by swammerdam according to this theory each gamete like a sperm or ovum contains a whole organism in miniature form okay so that is about pre formation that means already an individual is formed and in miniature form it is present in its gap then the fourth one is the theory of pan genesis pan genesis and this theory was proposed by darwin so according to this theory each body part produces small particles and those particles are known as pangin or gimule and these particles like pangins or gimules they finally give rise to a new individual so this is all about the pre mendelian concepts now see these concepts were not accepted because they favored blending inheritance and blending inheritance is actually it doesn't happen so these theories got rejected and then came mendel okay let us start with mendelian era mendelian era of course it started with mendel the extremely brilliant and super talented scientist but he is regarded as one of the most unlucky scientists of his time because he didn't get any recognition during his lifetime because he was ahead of time people could not understand him mendel was an austrian monk and uh, the experimental material that mendel worked with the experimental material of mendel is we all know it is garden pea right experimental material is garden pea do you know the another name of this garden pea it may be also called as edible pea okay it's also known as edible pea and the scientific name of edible pea is yes it's pisum sativum now i would like to mention something which is very important don't get confused with sweet pea okay there is another variety of pea that is known as sweet pea don't get confused with that sweet pea scientific name is lathyrus odoratus and sweet pea although the name is sweet but it's actually not sweet it's toxic okay so mendel didn't work with sweet pea he worked with garden pea or edible pea so please don't get confused right now one very important point that is important for neat exam that is the time period during which mendel performed his experiments okay the time period during which mendel performed his experiments is 1856 to 1863 
remember this is very important and exactly the same question was asked in NEET 2017. Okay, so you have to memorize this. That is the time period during which Mendel was performing his experiments. It is 1856 to 1863. Now a very important question is, Mendel being so exceptionally brilliant and talented, why did he fail? Okay, what are the reasons of his failure? Let us just have a look. First, communication was not very easy at that time. It's much older time, right? At that point of time, there was no such Google. Like, uh, we are very much uh, lucky. We are very much fortunate that whatever information we require is just a click away. But at that point of time, communication was not very easy. Moreover, he published his research article in an infamous journal. Okay? Now I have a question for the viewers. Do you know the name of the journal where, where Mendel published his work? If you know the answer, write in the comment section. Second point is that application of mathematics in biology. I have already mentioned that Mendel was ahead of time. At that point of time, application of mathematics in biology, people just could not think of it. Okay, so people just used to think, okay, whatever Mendel is doing, it's uh, not right. It's not correct. So people did not pay much attention. The scientific community didn't pay much attention to his work because no one didn't have any idea about how mathematics could be, could be used in biology, right? Then didn't get same result with hawkweed and lab lab variety of B. That is very important. See, whenever you are just going to uh, discover, you are going to do experiment with something and you are going to tell people that yes, I have got this result. But at the same time, you yourself is not uh, very much sure about your results. Then how can you make people understand the whole concept, right? While performing the experiment with these two varieties like hawkwheat and lab lab variety of bean, Mendel didn't get the same result. That's why he himself was a bit uh, confused. Then scientific community at that time was very busy over Darwin's origin of species controversy. Okay? At the same time, the whole scientific community was busy. So no one paid much attention to Mendel's work. Okay? So these are the more or less uh, some reasons behind his failure. After Mendel died in the year 1884 and after 16 years of his death, that is in the year 1900, finally Mendel's work got rediscovered. And this rediscovery was made independently by three scientists. Okay, so let me just write the names of those scientists. The first one was Hugo the Vries. And the second one was Karl Korens. And the third one was Eric von Sherman. Okay, so uh, these are the three scientists who rediscovered Mendel's work in the year. Let me just write the year as well. It's in the year 1900. Okay, and uh, Hugo de Vries specifically published Mendel's work in a particular journal called Flora in 1901. Okay. The next thing that is important for exam is why Mendel selected garden pea. Let us just have a look. First of all, garden pea had small size and secondly, short lifespan. That is three to four months, so it's easy to handle. Next one is presence of well-defined observable characteristics. Third point is that single mating gave rise to large number of seeds. Fourth point is that we know that garden pea contains bisexual flower. Now bisexual means presence of both male and female part in the same flower. So bisexual flower show self-pollination and it can be cross-pollinated as well. Okay. And finally, pure line or true breeds are easily available. Pure line means when the uh, same character is present from generation to generation, this pure line can be easily made available. Mendel chose 
seven pairs of contrasting characters. That means he took seven characters and two varieties for each characters. So let us just have a look. First character that he took was seed shape and the varieties that he took the dominant one was round and the recessive one was wrinkled. Okay. The second character that he chose was seed color. The dominant one is yellow and the recessive one is green. Third one is the flower position. The dominant one is axial position and the recessive one is the terminal position. Then flower color. The dominant color is violet and recessive one is white. Then pod shape. Here I would like to mention something. What is pod? Pod is fruit in case of leguminous plants. So garden pea being a leguminous plant, its fruits are known as pod. Okay. So pod shape, the dominant one is flat and the recessive one is constricted. Then pod color, the dominant one is green and recessive one is yellow. And finally stem height. Dominant one is tall and the recessive one is dwarf. Okay. Now one very important point I would like to mention. See, garden pea has seven chromosomes. Okay. That means N is equal to seven. So what do you think? These seven pair of contrasting characters were present on these seven chromosomes? No, it's not that. There was a scientist whose name is S. Blixit. Okay. He made an excellent discovery. He said that the seven pairs of contrasting characters that Mendel worked with are present only on chromosomes 1, 4, 5 and 7. Okay. So these are the chromosome numbers on where the seven pairs of contrasting characters were present. So please don't forget that. Don't think that chromosome number is seven. That means seven pairs of characters are present on this seven chromosome. No, they are present on only four chromosomes. Chromosome number one, chromosome number four, chromosome number five and chromosome number seven. Okay. Now, if someone asks you, if you are asked in the exam, which character is present on which chromosome? Okay. Just uh, try to remember one hint. Okay. This trick has been created by me. Okay. 7141454. That means if you can memorize the characters and the variety in this particular sequence, and along with this, if you just memorize this trick, 7141454, then you can easily give the answer. Like, seed shape is present on chromosome number 7. Then seed color is present on chromosome number 1. Then flower position is present on chromosome number 4. Then flower color is present on chromosome number 1. Then pot shape is present on again chromosome number 4. Then pod color is present on chromosome number 5 and then stem height is present on chromosome number 4. Okay, so for your understanding, let me write it here. 7, 1, 4, 1, 4, 5 and 4. So these are the chromosome numbers on which these 7 pairs of contrasting characters actually existed. Don't forget the name of the scientist. He is S. Blixit. And from this uh, particular hint, you can easily understand that maximum characters that were chosen by Mendel were present on which chromosome? Yes, it's chromosome number 4. See, 1, 2, 3. Three characters were present on chromosome number 4. So, this is all about today's lecture. This is just part 1 of this chapter. So if you like this video, please subscribe this channel and don't forget to share it with your friends. Okay, so keep watching and if you have any query, please ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much.